Hello everybody, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woking, I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. It is almost the end of October, which is also the end of spooky season, which is sad for me, because I love me some Halloween. But that means it's also time for us to go over what's going to be coming up next month for, I was about to say, Dragalia Lost, because I am truly, truly dedicated. <laughs> I used to do monthly videos on Dragalia Lost, and it's very hard for me not to kick that habit and just say Dragalia Lost. It's a go. So... Obviously, the reason we're able to look at this is because NA is two years behind uh, of the JP version of the game, which allows us to see kind of what's going up, going up ahead. I will say that there is one thing that happens in November that is NA exclusive that we will have to look at the EN server to get a better idea of what could potentially be in there. But at least let's go over what we got right now. So obviously, we're going we're doing the Gouda Gouda uh, Bree run right now, which is a raid. Make sure you're caught up to date and everything. I am for sure. The raids will be starting in part two. When's part two? That's a good question. I'm not 100% sure. But <laughs> just keep up and it'll be there. Next, um, we got the 24 million download campaign. There we go. In the down 24 million download campaign, which should be coming up pretty soon. It's not going to be called 24 million downloads for us. I forget what download number we're on, but we're supposed to get this download campaign at some point. That's the reason it's supposed to synergize with the current uh, Hisen Co. thing that we've got going on. So what are we getting from this? It's a login bonus. So 10 million QP, 10 silver apples, 10 of the 5 EXP, 10 golden apples, um, 10 of the two foes in the silver rank. And 10 tickets if you log in for 7 days. And then also the cumulative login, which is 200 mana prisms on the first login. Then a golden foe, and then the other golden foe. And then a rare mana prism, and then finally a lore. And that's it. There will be limited extra missions, which are just clear all the 11 missions. And it should not be... It shouldn't... It, it, it's not going to be that tough. It's going to be very easy, as it always is. And even if you do miss them, all you're missing out on is like, what, 120, 240 mana prisms, one rare mana prisms, and two beast footprints. So, I don't know, it shouldn't be too hard to deal with. It'll be easy. And then the Da Vinci Workshop will get an update, which will let us get these three right here. Uh, the Legendary Beast of the Grove, the Wicked Disciples Command Seal, and the Hunter of Love. And if you want to play with a rare mana prism, you can get a copy of Hachio no Kagami, and the sword of the beginning and the end. And this will last from November 10th to November 17th, which is not for us. <laughs> it will last from, it will last a week. From when this campaign starts, it will last a week until the campaign is done. Um, and then there will be a command code update. I'm not sure if we already have this though, but maybe we don't. The command code can now be directly transferred to one command code to another without removing it from the... We might already have this. I'm not 100% sure. Feel free to tell me. I don't know a lot about command codes because I only really put them on the units I super care about, aka Quetz. So I need to get a little bit better with putting them on. I have so many that I haven't used. I should be a little bit better about that. Anyway, there'll also be a two, uh, two times chance to get super and great suck when strengthening CEs and servants which will be perfect for all the golden and silver CE uh, stuff that I've been getting from Gouda Gouda. The All Ember Gathering and Hunter Grounds quest are open, and then all the Ember Gathering and Hunting Grounds quests are open. And then it's a half QP for strengthening C, uh, CEs and servants. Uh, the next one, you'll be, you have the ability to unlock with um, a Mana Prism, the ability to spend a thousand of the regular Mana Prisms on Grand Cavello, which is an increase of bound points and Mystic Code EXP to 5%. So yeah, remember, you're not paying a single rare mana prism for a copy, for 5 copies. You're paying one rare mana prism to unlock the ability to exchange for, uh, of, uh, the ability to exchange one copy equals 1,000 mana prisms, meaning you'll need 5,000 mana prisms in total if you want the thing to be max on limit broken. Uh, game updates. Touching the screen during skill animations will speed it up. We already have that. I know that for sure. And we already have these two, so we're not getting that. Maybe we'll get something in replacement, but maybe we won't. Who knows? And then the banner that goes with it is one that features Ibuki, um, Kintoki. I should say Ibuki Saber, even though we only have one version of Ibuki at the moment. Uh, Berserker, Kintoki, and uh, Suna. 
with it being this was on a rotating schedule obviously there will be one banner featuring uh ibuki and the other one featuring kentoki if you want a quick uh idea about what i think about these units i think they're all very cool units i love ibuki i like using her i think she's probably if you rank her among the other aoe sabers she does not compare to mordred artoria and some of the other ones that i'm currently not remembering at the moment i don't think she's probably on that level i don't think so but it's kind of ibuki is she on the same level of changing every single one of your art your cards into buster She's pretty good, but she is that good? I mean, probably because of the ignored defense on her AOE. Mmm. Okay, what, what would you say among AOE? I'm now having someone come in here now and debate me on this one. Because I was going to say I like Ibuki, but in terms of the sabers I use, it goes to Artoria for the first one. That's because Artoria is definitively the best. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, is she on the same level as her? <laughs> that's all I was saying. I'm saying that she is very good. I was at the I was gonna end that with saying she is very good, but if you have Artoria, maybe it's not something you no, should actually activate you Mordred. I remembered Mordred and I was like, mm -hmm. Mordred's good too. She's exactly the same as Saber. Yeah. Except for the not she doesn't get the um She gets more crit star absorption than anything. Yeah, she does. It's different. Either way, maybe that's the sign for me to say it's contentious. I really like Ibuki. She's a very solid AoE. She works great with Vich. She can work with Oberon to deal... I think I've occasionally run into the issue where she doesn't actually kill fully compared to Artoria. Then again, this is at NP level 1, so it's a little bit different. And skills are... They should be 10-10-10 on my side. If they're not, then I should really get into that and finish it. But I think at some point I got really busy with a lot of units. But the point is, I think she's good. If you definitely care about her, then you can definitely use her a whole bunch, especially if you have Vich. And then you can occasionally use Oberon to make up for the fact that she's not... If she's not dealing enough damage, you can always swap in Oberon and figure it out. That's a very expensive team comp, but you can figure out a way. Love finds a way. And then we have Kintoki, who my brother says it needs a little bit of strengthening, but he also hits very, very hard. So... He hits very, very hard. I think the only thing he doesn't have is a... Like, the, I, and I can understand where this is coming from. It's a very basic... <laughs> It's, it's a, a monster strength A+, plus, increase attack one time, 50%, charge MP, 50%, increase debuff resistance, and he's had this since he's released, and I think the only thing they've ever buffed is the Noble Phantasm. But even with all that said, he still does a lot of damage, like an insane amount of damage. Um, so definitely worth having. I always wanted Kentoki, and unfortunately I've never been able to get him. He's a bro, so that's why I want him. And Suno looks like the, the guy from Persona 4, and that's about all I know about him. Next, let's move on. Uh, this is what we currently have, which is the main quest, uh, Clear Aid Campaign Part 2. That's what we're currently going through. Uh, 2300 days has already passed for us, and this is the next event that should be coming for us, which is the Guda Guda Close Call 2021. This is, this needs to, you need to have cleared Hai, hai in Kyo. If you have not cleared Hai in Kyo, clear Hai in Kyo <laughs> immediately. Because uh, you're going to, in general, you should be finishing the, um, the, the story as quickly as you can. Because this event requires Hai in Kyo, and then the next event is going to require you beating Lost Belt 6. So... Get, get on that as soon as you can. <laughs> you re get ready to read a whole bunch and just get get through it. Um, this is the next Guda Guda. I'm not sure about the event mechanics because I never, like I say all the time, I never look up into what the event does and so I can it can be a mystery for me when I actually go playing. Um, but there is going to be a free-to-play unit, which is going to be Mysterious uh, Run Mario X, which is an Avenger. It's going to feature a summoning camp. There's going to be featuring two summon campaigns. One that has Izumo on it, and then featured also on it is Mori and Izo, along with uh, Nobunaga uh, Summer, or Berserker, whichever way you want to call her. Um, I don't know a lot about Izumo. I don't see a lot of people talk about her in general, so I have to take a quicker look. I'm not 100% sure to know a lot about it. I think she might be a quick caster. She is a quick caster. 10 hits just a very quick look at it of like could this potentially work 
maybe. I don't know, I'll have to, at a 50% MP charge does help with quick. Her being caster is kind of a little bit iffy because casters typically do less damage, but if you're looking for an AOE quick caster, <laughs> I think she's literally your only option. I can't think of too many that are known. There might be some three stars in there. It's not a very contentious like thing to be. Um, Nobunaga, Berserker. She's a very solid single target uh, uh, buster Berserker. Uh, and Izzo is very good, and he has constant Spirit Tundresses dresses because he is a fan favorite for many of the JP player base and a lot of the NA player base. And Mori's cool too, and they're both limited. So if you actually want a chance at Izzo and Mori, your best chances are during Guda Guda. Neither of these dudes are in the new Guda Guda banner that we have right now, the rerun. Specifically because they were saving them for when actual Guda Guda started. And then we have the second summoning campaign, which features Ryoma as a Lancer, as a 5-star. Demon King Nobunaga, Izzo, Mori, and Okita J. Soji. Okita J. Soji should be on rate up for the entire time, and obviously these two will be split up for one banner for Ryoma and the other one for Nobunaga. Um, I don't know very much again, again about Ryoma. I have to look into him a little bit more, but I actually do want him because I'm a big fan of uh, Ryoma and Oryu in general. So I wouldn't mind actually having them. I actually have to think and sit down and be like, do... <laughs> it's getting close to the end of the year and there's a lot of banners coming up that could potentially be in the waters. You'll see what I'm saying, but you really do have to think long and hard if you want these two. Because there's going to be some rough banners coming up, not only in New Year's, but also in December at least. And there's also a surprise exclusive to NA that you'll be, I'll be talking about and seeing right here. And there should also be strength things, one for Demon King Nobunaka because she needs it. And finally, that's it, what it looks like for November, except for on NA, there's an exclusive NA uh, event that happens. One of them is, funny enough, the advent calendar, which starts at the end of November, uh, that leads into December. But I guess I'll talk about that more when I'm talking about December itself. But the other thing that happens is that we have a, fa a Fago Thanksgiving special. And in this one, typically what we get is a, some simple logins, like a, one apple, a silver and gold, one sink quartz, a little bit, a half AP, great and, great and super suck a chance increase. Uh, some missions that offer a single quartz. <coughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, and then a summoning campaign, which features a lot of units, and it's always really, really random who they decide to put on this. Uh, if we look here, we can look at some previous Thanksgiving banners and kind of see what they were cooking and see if we can find any through line. But typically, I think there's usually one... No, there's not, because this year there wasn't. There was a Saber, there was a Lancer, there was a Caster, there was an Assassin, and then there was a Moon Cancer. Five in total, which was BB Summer, Nero Summer, uh, King Asan, Erish Goggle, and Benny Enma. And then if we look at the other one, this one had Skahawk in it. This one had seven. This one had Okita, Moriarty, Skahawk... Uh, Reigns, uh, Summer Nero, Jack the Ripper, and Zhang Yu. This one followed the seven classes for seven servants uh, following. And then we go to the other uh, one that was previous to that one. That one also followed seven servants. So for some reason, there was a there was a pattern which was there was seven servant classes, seven servants. And then the, for this one, they just decided two from the main, two from the other. And then one random extra. I don't know if they'll follow that again this year. I think it would probably make the most sense to do five again. Uh, there's plenty of units this could be. This could be any number of units that you thought like, hey, this could be a surprise Morgan banner for all we know, to be honest. They could just decide to throw Morgan up one final time before December ends. And that way, Morgan will be featured three times in a single year. <laughs> Which would be crazy, but it literally, it, there's no rhyme or reason for it. At, at, at the very least, I can say a saber will be in it, and it will be a popular saber. Maybe Gilgamesh will show up. Typically, it is servants who are popular. Um, I'm not sure if there's a lot of Benny Enma fan, I'm, but I'm a big fan of Benny Enma, so I'm glad that she's on here. King San, obviously a big fan favorite. Um, any of the waifu ones are always going to be a favorite. Reigns, Jack, uh... 
Zhang Yu is maybe the weird one out here, but someone has to love that horse, man. And it can't just be his wife. I mean, he's a cool giant horse. And this is another one where it's like, oh yeah, Ivan the Terrible was featured on here. Doesn't really fit the rhyme or reason, but every single other one of these units does. Where they have Musashi, Shiki, Gilgamesh, Ishtar, Ivan, Mysterious Heroin X, uh, Kentoki. The only one that is the odd man out is Ivan. So if there was anyone that I would think like, hey, what would this be? If it was going to be for Saber, it would probably be maybe Bride Nero. Because it's been a while since they featured Bride Nero, I think. I'd have to actually sit down and think about it. But if I took a, just a wild stab in the dark, I feel like Bride Nero and Gilgamesh would seem likely. They didn't do an archer last year, so maybe this year they do an archer and they do a rider. And then they look into one of the other extra classes. Maybe this is a good way to kind of get Jolter back out there. She did just get recently featured, so maybe they don't want to do it. But again, there's not a lot of rhyme or reason for this one. It's very hard to pick. To kind of predict what the Thanksgiving units are would take a miracle. But anyway, that will happen uh, for NA. And that always happens in NA. And after that, all we have is December, and that is the end of the year for Fago. And then it's time to start planning for the next year, because 2022, I've been kind of silently thinking about it, because I did that video where I talked about all the same courts that are going to be available um, throughout the year. And it seemed like a lot, but then when I was going through it, what you didn't see was the parts where I was looking at every single banner that was coming with those un uh, those same courts and going, I don't know how anyone saved. This is actually insane. <laughs> this is unbearable the amount of units that they're about to release but at the same time not a lot of events because 2022 was still during pandemic and for some reason during 2021 to 2022 they decided this is a great year to just get rid of um get rid of rerun events and we're gonna stick to that damn it and we're not gonna rerun a lot of events even though it would definitely help while we have nothing available so that's something to look forward to next year. But that is it for this month. Thank you very much for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you ended up liking the video, feel free to leave a like. It does help me out a whole bunch. Uh, you can comment down below. Tell me what you're looking forward to this month. If you have any guesses, I think I might actually try and do a video where I try and guess the Thanksgiving units and just maybe do a... <laughs> start a bingo or something to see how many I can actually potentially get. And see if any like maybe pick one servant for each extra class and kind of guess it and see who wins. Maybe I'll make my brother do it too and we can have a contest see who can win that. Because again, there's really just no way to predict this. There's I don't think there's a single rhyme or reason to it at all. It just exists and it happens and you have to figure it out. Um, it's maybe the scariest banner in all the year of Fago NA because there's literally no predicting it and it can be a lot of good units that you want all at once. And yeah, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. You guys have a safe, spooky Halloween. And if you're looking for more spooky Halloween stuff, then obviously you can check out the 13 Nights of Halloween stuff that I've been doing. And if you want to go to my Twitch on Monday at 6 p.m. California time, uh, me and Zen are going to be watching some bad movies to celebrate Devil's Night. So that should be fun. I mean, that'll be fun for us. I don't know if anyone will be interested in seeing it, but <laughs> I at least will have fun, <laughs> and that's good enough sometimes. So that's it, everyone. See you next time. Peace out.